In this video, I want to go over the BIOS settings to look for, make sure are set properly on your HP T730 thin client when you're running as a headless setup. And what I mean by headless is not having a keyboard or monitor attached to it. So you likely do this if you're running it as a server or if you're running it as a firewall for your home network. Now, the points I will mention can apply to any computer, but this here is HP's BIOS interface, and you know, every manufacturer is going to have a different layout, so, and they might word stuff differently, so you'll have to adapt to your machine if you're using something different. So I'm using the um, default settings in this BIOS. I can achieve this by going into the default setup here, restoring factory settings as default, and then doing the apply defaults and exit. But anyway, the first thing, probably the biggest thing you'll want to look for is what the computer should do after a power loss. So in this case, I'll go into advanced and power on options. And in the middle here is after power loss, and by default, it is set to off. Meaning when power is lost and it comes back, um, the computer is not going to turn on. Which, in a headless setup, if you're relying on it as a server or a uh, firewall, that's kind of a pain because you have to go to it and press the power button when the power goes out. So you have three options, off, on, previous state. Previous state, um, if the computer is running and the power is lost, then it'll come back on. But in the case that it's off and the power goes out and comes back, it's not going to turn on on its own. So we want it to, anytime power is plugged in or restored, we want it to turn on. So the other thing we have... HP words it as bypass F1 prompt on configuration changes. Um, some other manufacturers might have something like um, bypassing like keyboard errors or they might have something about configuration changing bypassing. Um, what this means is let's say I were to add or uh, remove RAM or let's say Maybe the, there's an event where one of the RAM sticks goes bad. And so the motherboard will detect that, oh, the amount of RAM has changed. And it'll display a prompt about it. And you have to press the F1 keyboard on your computer, on your keyboard, to accept that. Which, if you're running your computer without a keyboard or monitor attached to that, it's not going to boot at all, and you're going to wonder what's going on. And you have to hook up the monitor to see what's going on, hook up the keyboard just to press one key. So we don't want that. So we're going to enable this bypass so that it will always boot even if something changes intentionally or unintentionally. Accept the changes. And the other thing would be the boot order. This here is a list of the devices that the computer should search for something to boot off of. So we see it's split into the newer UEFI and then you have the legacy BIOS boot sources. You'll see it goes from top to bottom and it looks at if there's any floppy or CD drives or any USB devices plugged in. And then lastly, it'll boot off your internal um, solid state drive or hard drive. And down here, you also see the addition of a network controller. That's, that's Pixie booting. That's a whole nother thing, basically, you know. Instead of installing something to your internal storage, you can talk to a server to get your operating system to boot off of. Pretty irre irrelevant to our case, but the one thing you want to make sure is that the um, 
internal storage and the USB are at the top of your boot list. Now it's up to you as to whether you want the um, internal storage or a USB stick to boot first. Um, having the USB stick first could be handy if, uh, if you, you know, copy an installer of, you know, like Linux or Windows or whatever you want to install on your computer. You can just plug in your flash drive, power on your computer, and it'll go straight into said installer. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just always want it to go to your internal storage every time. So you can, I can do that here by, um, I can just move that to the top. The default, this is the default layout for the T730. And I'm okay with this, so I'm not going to do anything with it. This also has, yes. So in the storage options, you can actually just say, um, do I want USB sticks to boot before the hard drive? Basically, before or after disabled. Default is before the hard drive, so we are fine with that. Leave it as is. So those are the three up, three big things that you'll want to look out for in a headless computer setup. I hope this helped, and thank you very much for watching. Take care.